Welcome everyone to the Tech in Ed Tech podcast. It's a pleasure to welcome you once again to our newest episode. Today we delve into a thought-provoking discussion breaking down multi-language automatic captions and audio dubbing for live events. I'm your host Rishi from Magic Ed Tech and our guest for today's podcast is Chris Zhang, senior solutions architect from AWS Edge Elemental. Chris is an evangelist with almost three decades of experience and his efforts are pivotal towards helping improve the live event language caption experience. Chris, welcome on board. Thank you, Rishi. Thank you for uh, inviting me to this podcast. Really appreciate it. Chris, why don't we start today's session with you telling us about yourself and your journey in your career so far? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my, my name is Chris, Chris Zen. Uh, I started... Uh, as a networking uh, programming, so I, I specialized, uh, had a lot of uh, deep learning in uh, networking uh, before. And then I joined into uh, media uh, technology, starting from a smaller uh, startup. And later, on, I fortunately joined the Elemental Technologies, which uh, a couple of years ago got acquired by AWS. So I'm a senior solution architect in AWS, focusing on media services. So here, my, most of my job is helping customers architecting a variety of streaming workload on AWS. So from the live event perspective, there's a, you know, live events for social media. There's a customer doing town hall meetings and there's a lot of public events and live training, education, sports, you name it. So essentially that's my, uh, current job and my, I'm very, I'm very passionate about to bring live event to to your audiences. Recently, I worked a lot uh, on the tackling the problem, how to bring live accessibility for live streams. The reason being uh, for live streaming, when people talk about uh, bring your live accessibility to, to your stream, that's a lot of heavy lifting. And it's, there's not a very easy solution available in the industry, especially when you talk about how you bring multiple language captions to the customer. So that's basically my uh, background and uh, let's dive into it. Well, thanks, thanks. This is really an interesting journey and I think uh, you have come a long way, you know, uh, basically, you know, the the live event language along with accessibility that, that talks about a great career you have so far. So, Chris, can you talk about the applications of multi-language automatic captions and audio dubbing at tech? Totally. So as uh, people might already know that in education, there are a lot and a lot more uh, people are doing providing live streaming, like in the classroom fashion. And also because from the pandemic, people are accustomed to like remote learnings, uh, regardless whether you are maybe in a hybrid uh, setup. But when, when it comes to learning in ad tech, uh, a lot of people coming from different backgrounds, especially you're coming to, for example, in American, a lot of uh, university students, they're coming from all over the world, right? Some people coming from Korean, some people come from Japan, uh, some are from uh, Asia or maybe Europe, but they, their native language might not be English. So normally they... So English is their second language, but when they learn in the class, uh, all the teachers are actually in general speaking English. But how do we help the student to have immersive uh, experience in the classroom fashion? I have seen students sometimes they put up some uh, application to be able to automatically transcribe the, whatever the teacher are saying to help them to uh, get more good experience or understand some of the word more clearly. But I think what if we can bring a live streaming into the classroom with multiple language capturing enables? So the students do not have to spend extra time and do the heavy lifting or try to find all the different tooling to help them better understand the, the, the content of the classroom teaching. If we can make the live captions in different languages available right in their choice at fingertips. So I think that's going to help them, the student providing a much better experience. And also, you know, they don't have to focus in on the technology part, but rather focusing on the content being teach or whatever they were trying to learn. No, this is, this is wonderful. And I believe, uh, you know, these live captions adding to the diversity and the belongingness is uh, definitely a world to look for. 
So let's let's do a deep dive in understanding the challenges today around embedding capsules. Where do you think the world is going and, and what are typical challenges around capsules embedding? So in a live event scenario, so those are challenges are different from comparing to the VOD. So today we're going to focus in on live events or live streaming. So in live streaming, the typical traditional way of providing a multi-language captions, those are you're going to hire a stenographer or people who are, we call it the, uh, uh, you know, captionist, right? Those are humans who are actually fluent in listening to English. For example, if the main, um, content are speaking in English, and then they listen to your voice and they translate it into different languages. So for a live event, if you have, let's say, six different language outputs, like Spanish, German, or you know Japanese or Korean, you need to hire multiple captioners to actively listen and translate and type into those um, different languages. And also for, in today's scenario, the the caption is how they work. They need to take breaks, especially for if you have a longer event, like multiple four hours or maybe a, a, a whole day event, you're going to have to hire multiple captioners to be able to take turns in order to get some break. So those are typically added a lot of complexity, not only from the streaming setup, but also logistically and the cost perspective. So it's very, very challenging for our customers, whether it's in ad tech or in public space or even enterprise, right, to provide a live multi-language live caption solutions today. But if you look at the, the technology available today, we have a generative AI. We have a lot of uh, automatic audio-based speech recognition uh, engines available. It's very mature. But how do we leverage those ASR engines to automatically transcribe your voice into, let's say, in English, and we can translate the English into different languages. So these are the current technology available to us. But the core difficult part when we apply to live streaming is that if you look at the end-to-end -end pipeline for live event from the camera to the transcoding engine to the CDN distribution and all the way to the viewers, this particular process are pretty easy to set up in the cloud today. But when you try to merge into the caption workflow into the existing live streaming workflow, that's where the difficult comes in. And that's where uh, the industry actually do not have a proper solution. So that's where, you know, preventing people from delivering such a solutions today. That's wonderful. And, and can you help me relate to these challenges with respect to how you are seeing them at AWS and how do you are seeing them impacting the classroom? Like uh, one way you can you can talk of how will embedding captions in live stream in a, a classroom environment, how will it revolutionize education? Can you talk of it? Yeah, totally. So let me first uh, talk about maybe give a little bit of background in the live caption world, right? So traditionally in American, when you look at the captions, uh, the right way most people are doing today, they, they hire a captioner, they embedding those captions into the live streaming itself before they hit the transcoding process. And those are normally hardware based solutions and you need a low, a hardware on premises, like uh, where your event is happening. They call it caption encoder or something like that. Uh, and, and then you hit the event. Your, once you have the caption embedded into your video, you do the transcoding and then you do the delivery. But one of the limitations for that is that those caption encoders today and the protocols they were using is called 608 or 708. These are only supporting seven languages, which is the Latin American based languages. So we, by that, what do you expect? Which means, they support English, they support Spanish, but when you talk about the Korean, Japanese, or Russian, they, they cannot support that. That protocol is support is not available in there. So when you look at the, the streaming from the caption generation and also from distribution, I would like to consider the problem into two separate phases. The first phase is signal generation and the contribution to the cloud. 
And the second part, once you have your signal in there, how do you distribute it to, to your viewers using the current streaming technology? So what I think the solution will be, we will try to help customers to leverage in the cloud-based ASR engines and a generative AI-based technology to remove the heavy lifting they have to deal with for on-premise-based workflows. By doing that, I think we will enable the industry to take the advantage of the modern technologies and be able to you know, achieve their goals for delivering accessible content in there. So in the, in the solution, what I'm imagining is that we do a late binding uh, solution for, for your captions. So the captions, at the end of the day, uh, it's, it's just a text right, in different languages. And the 608, 708 protocol is they try to embed your text inside your video delivery stream. There's two problems. The one problem is today that protocol is limited. We do not have a proper protocol to carrying, you know, the multiple languages per se. The 708 do enable that particular capabilities, but uh, if you're an industry expert, you will know that end-to-end -end support for 708 is not there. It's going to be a, another heavy lifting to be able to support it. So what are the efficient ways to make it happen relatively easy without a lot of heavy lifting? So the second part will be, since it's a text-based protocol, and if we look at the, how we're delivering the live event today over the internet, especially you're you know, watching a live show on YouTube or watch a live show you know, uh, sports or live event, most likely those are delivered in using HTTP live streaming protocol. And the protocol itself support VTT sidecar files like, like a caption. So easily we can think about a solution that how can we leveraging the ASR engine to generate all the captions in different languages and how we can bind those captions synchronized with your video and present it in the VTT format. So that by default, with this particular architecture or design, the, your live stream will be CDN agnostic because all the CDN is going to support it by default and going to be viewer player agnostic because all the players are most likely to ubiquitous support for HRS streaming. So specifically in attack, I think depending on the attack scenario, uh, whether it's classroom or it's a hybrid session set up in the education tag, I think by enabling this technology uh, within your live streaming, attack can actually leveraging this to implementing the solution in the cloud. So essentially, I think today most attack may be enabling the closed captions, yeah. you know, using the on-premise hardware like caption caption encoders. But with this technology moving forward, they just need to send a stream to the cloud and leverage in the cloud to be able to generate multi-language captions. And then they can provide that live caption either to the, you know, uh, to the student in the classroom or maybe in remote locations with the accessibility feature turned around. I think that's going to be revolutionary for how the ad ad tech going to enable their uh, viewer experience. Chris, your insight into the 608 and 708 way of embedding caption is definitely intriguing. I would say you are you are really an expert into this area. Can you talk of how AI tools integrating into a live video caption will help the learning environment? Oh, absolutely. So accessibility, I think it's going to be in a lot of strategic discussions today for in every enterprise and every segment of the industry. Right? We you want to reach more people, you want to reach more uh, audiences. Coming back to the educational uh, segment, I think the way we enable that is that we, with multiple language captions, this is the first step. So, but the first step will actually help the viewers your, or students to be able to more effectively learn. And also your, your content will actually enable you to reach the global audiences. For example, if you have a English speaking content, right, a course that you available to you, if you only can speak English, you cannot reach 
you know, folks in Japan, for example, who might be interested in your content. How do you reach them? So by providing multiple language captions, that's one way. In further, we also talk about audio dubbing, right? In, in today's world, we need to provide the experience to your viewers rather than feeding them information. From the experience perspective, I think customer or viewers like me, even to myself, I sometimes prefer to watch your uh, course material in my native language. Or I might want to watch the course in English, but I would like to turn Chinese captions so I can pick up the interesting or some of the word I'm, I'm not very familiar with so I can better get more uh, better experience and learn better from the content I want to I wanted to learn. So I think with uh, captions and audio dubbing, you will be able to increase your audiences all over the world globally and also providing better user experience and give a user a choice either watching the captions or select the proper audio dubbing feature available to you. How can educators be trained to effectively use these AI tools in, in their teaching practices? That's a good question. Actually, the training part, I think uh, because the solution, we call it late binding and the uh, accessibility feature is built in into the players, most of the video players. If you watch a uh, video player like you watch you, uh, Netflix or Amazon Prime or even the uh, any of the web player, there's a CC uh, options in there. If you move your mouse over the your video player area, you normally see a toolbar uh, shows up. In the toolbar, you can turn on captions. You might see a CC icon in there. You click in there. You will be able to select a different languages or turn off your CC or you know turn it on. So within those, whatever language you provided to your viewers, uh, those options are going to show up. So the customer already know how to select those. And are there any ethical considerations to keep in mind when these teachers or institutions are implementing AI-driven uh, language tools in the educational setting? I think it's more like uh, for the teachers, I think it's going to be a transparent because all the technology we were trying to integrate is actually uh, on the back end, right? For live streaming, we were leveraging the AI uh, and the ASR engine to automatically transcribe uh, the teacher's voice. I think today we might, uh, there may be a little bit uh, concerns, not concern, but if the teacher, if for example, I'm teaching in English, maybe there's some word I'm not uh, speaking clearly in native English. So those words might be mistaken by the ASR engine. So I think those are going to be fine-tuned, but those will be continuously improved by the different ASR engine. So I think uh, eventually the adoption, the technology, as, as, as the technology matures, it should be getting uh, much better in terms of picking up the voices and doing a, a better job in them. So basically, based on your extensive experience, Chris, what advice you would give to edtech companies looking to innovate with AI-driven language tools? So my advice will be always being open-minded because, uh, you know, a lot of people, when we talk about the captions, we go directly into the, you know, how, how are we doing the caption today? Like we were doing 608, we were doing caption encoders. But normally when I look at this particular problem, I try to say, you know, what is the outcome I'm trying to drive? What is the customer experience I want to try to deliver to the customers? I do not start from the what's available from a technology perspective, but rather I would say, what do you want to do for your customers? What is the features that make your product to improve your customer experience and can make an impact? And then we're working backward from there saying, okay, you know, those are identified features or function we need to deliver, then we look at how we're going to deliver it using the existing technologies. What are available? What are not available? And what are the integration point in there? So before, if you look at the live caption, I think uh, widely adopted, the reason being the, you know, crafting a proper system is so hard and it's difficult and it's not scalable. But once you be, once you are able to 
working backward from the outcome, from the customer perspective, you will need to, you will have better understanding where you should be focusing on and, and solving those problems rather than leveraging the old, older, I mean, leveraging the existing technology to, how do I say that? There's a, a lot of baggage in there. I think when you, in the design process, we need to, we need to break. Yeah. So, so basically the way you can cite us that given the evolution and technological advancement, right, to the precision and outcome. So humans are influencing uh, the, the live captioning a lot, right? Totally, right. Yeah. So basically, you know, on the personal insights and advice to the industry, uh, particularly about the faculty and institutions at large, right, would you recommend them to embrace leveraging live captioning, AI-based? Is this, is this something, an area to watch and, and, and see? More? Yeah, that's absolutely right. Uh, with the uh, with this particular protocol and uh, availability of the solution, I think this solution moving forward going to be get a lot uh, easier for the customer and and also much cheaper. The so one of the reasons why the live caption or for multi language caption are not available for live event because it's the logistics and the complexity how to set it up and there's a lot of cost associated and a lot you know when you when you try to hire a lot of uh, stenographer or hiring uh, people to do the job in for your live event, uh, not only the scheduling of your stenographer, but also the complexity of the set up the system to deliver your event is it's so freaking difficult. But with this late binding technology, with with the current proposal where I see it's moving forward, we were able to remove all the heavy lifting. From the customer to just the, you know enable the customer uh, to providing this particular experience, but also the systems, the IT technician or professional who set up or managing this particular pro, uh, backend process a lot easier. Probably you already familiar how to set up a live streaming using AWS services or our partner solutions. Those are like a one single click. You can hook up your video and you get your delivery in there. We want to make this backend experience to deliver multiple language captions also as easy as possible, just like one single click, and you select the languages you want to you want to deliver to your customers and, and be done with it. So as the technology matures, this and also because we were leveraging more and more AI-based technology in the cloud, I can see the cost also significantly bring uh, bring down. So with that. Uh, we, I definitely encourage people to start looking at the uh, live captioning uh, features and uh, the solution in there and be able to uh, enable your content to a uh, global uh, audiences. Another part of it will be I hear from a, a, a lot of customers, they really, really want to deliver their content to to their audiences, not only from a global reach perspective, but also you need to think about the inclusion, right? What if uh, people really in need of the accessibility for your content? For example, for people who are visually uh, impaired, so they will really, really going to need a enabled audio dubbing feature. So you're going to have to provide your content in a with, with audio dubbing, so I can hear whatever the content is being teach because I cannot see very, uh, very clearly. And I, how do you enable that? For example, you, if you have a Korean or Japanese uh, student who want to learn your content, so how good is your experience going to be if you can listen the lecture to speak in Japanese for your, for your course? That will be an awesome experience. I think the need not only coming from the enterprise strategic perspective, but also driven by uh, some regulations. So sometimes uh, your content need to be delivered in such a way. So I think both are actually formalizing the strategy and the direction moving forward. So this the technology here we were developing definitely going to be helping the customers to remove the heavy lifting, reduce costs, and deal with the uh, best uh, possible accessible product to your customers. Thanks, thanks, Chris, for your parting thoughts and advice for our leaders in the tech and education space. 
I think we would love to hear more from you as as you delve into uh, you know this live captioning area. I believe you should definitely share your experience in the educational setting with our with our audience. I think uh, I, this is a message to our growing community that if you are focused on improving accessibility in education, do follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter, and at the same time, you know, do connect to Chris Thang for his wonderful views. Thanks, thanks, Chris. Appreciate your time today. Thank you, Rishi, for inviting me. Glad to be able to share the uh, solution in here, and uh, I'm hoping we can provide you more help and driving the outcome for your customers. Thank you, thank you, Chris. Thank you. Bye bye.